I never want to unnecessarily drag a presidential administration through the mud. The problem is this administration has already done so on their own. Uh, they've been utterly foolish. They've been completely godless. And what can you do except bring attention to it and try to do something about it? And folks, you know, it, I don't believe that it's a coincidence that we're in such a time as this, as our country is on the precipice of just going completely down the tubes. And I'm not trying to say that to be like a doom and gloom guy unnecessarily or anything like that. I'm just calling it like it is. I think this president is woefully inept. And I, I you know, I think the really scary part is that there are so many people in this country who are fooled. They're fooled. Either they're fooled into thinking that this, that this administration is somehow good for America, or they just really don't like Trump and those conservatives, darn it. Could be. I, I, honestly, I'm, not, I'm really not sure. But folks, I bring that up to tell you, and this goes along with our legacy campaign uh, you know, as well, why financial issues has to stay in the fight. I don't believe that the Lord has called us to just sit back, relax, put our seatbelt on, and wait for him to come back to take us to glory. I believe that that must be the anchor of our soul, and that ultimately that is our final hope. And that no matter what happens in this life, the Lord is going to return, and either he will take us from this life in physical death, or he will come back himself and bring about the renewal of all things. And Christians say, yes, amen, praise God. But I don't believe we would be doing our best, and I don't believe we would be bringing glory to God if we just sat back and let the world, let the world burn, for lack of a better word. If you're a Christian, you have the hope of Jesus Christ And that hope of Jesus Christ is not just an eternal hope, but it's a hope for today as well. So when you see injustice, you don't just stand idly by and let it pass by. You step in. I mean, folks, we take our cues from the Lord Jesus Christ himself, who stepped into this world as a man, lived among us, the book of Hebrews says uh, he was one who is acquainted with our weaknesses. He understands temptation and he lived, died, and rose again. We must do the same as well. Now, we certainly don't do it salvifically. Okay, we're not saving anybody from their sins. Only Jesus does that. But we have got to get involved. It is a good thing for Christians to want this country to be restored to its Christian values. And I know there's revisionist historians out there who will say America was never founded on Christian values. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. The majority of the founding fathers were believers. And the founding documents of this country were far more heavily influenced by a Judeo-Christian worldview and by the Bible than any other worldview in human history. Without question. And I know most of you will say the outliers, Thomas Jefferson. I get that. There are some others as well. But you got to look at the whole picture. This country was founded as a Christian nation. And that's not a bad thing. The, the left is going to try to decry the term Christian nationalism and call that something bad. That's not bad. If this country returns to its foundation as a country that seeks after God, what does the scripture tell us? Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. This is not a prosperity gospel thing. I'm not telling you that the hope of the world is in America. The hope of the world is in Jesus Christ and him alone, okay? But I am telling you that we still have to be pro-America. We have to be about our country being prosperous, because as we've seen in history, when America is at its best, the whole world tends to be blessed. I did not mean to rhyme there, but that's the way it came out. I believe that this country has been put on this, on this earth for such a time as this. 
And I certainly would agree with those of you who would say, absolutely, we cannot put our final hope in America. Ultimately, we don't belong here. This isn't our kingdom. We belong in heaven. We're citizens of the kingdom of heaven. But that doesn't give us an excuse to just sit back. We got to fight. And I'm not talking about, Dan would say this all the time. I say it with him as well. He, he had to give this caveat. I'm not talking about raising physical arms and going and trying to kill people who disagree with you. It's doing the things that Shanna has told us so faithfully over and over again. Defunding darkness and funding the kingdom of light. We're defunding darkness. We're funding the kingdom of light. Folks, if you're a partner, you're keeping an eye on those alerts that we're given. There's so many alerts that we've been giving on these companies that were on the buy list for so long. And now we're getting taken off because they're cowtailing to the whims of the culture. That's part of why Pat gives you the great option there to be able to send a note to these companies to tell them, hey, here's why I'm selling my stock. Here's why I'm not supporting you anymore. Because you have failed miserably. That's one way that we stand, in the, that we stand and we fight. Another way that we do so, supporting ministries like Preborn and India Partners, I, I, I love, I, you know, I think Preborn does this so well. They've picked a specific um, evil that they're fighting against, abortion, which, by the way, is murder, in case you didn't realize. They've picked abortion as their main lane that they're going to stay in. But their end goal is not just to save babies. Their end goal is to bring babies, mothers, and fathers into the presence of Jesus Christ and to share with them your only hope in life and death is in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. And so that's why we celebrate and say amen to the babies who are saved, but we do it tenfold to the souls that are saved. Folks, I say this to all of you to tell you that is what financial issues and FISM TV is here to do. We are here to create for you God-honoring media content, television shows, radio shows, podcasts, things like that. That's family-friendly, that's pro-America, but ultimately that brings glory to God and makes much of the name of Jesus Christ. That's, that's why we're here, folks. That's why we're here. I, I said in the last segment that I had a personal testimony I'd like to share with all of you about Dan. As I was preparing for today's show, I was listening to one of last year's shows where Dan, similarly to what I'm trying to do now, was asking people to give for the end of our fiscal year. And if you don't know, we raised $200,000 last year for the end of our fiscal year. We're trying to match half of that, 100000 so I believe we can do it, Absolutely. But Dan said something that really struck a chord with me, and it, was, it s said so much to the person of who Dan was. He said when he went on the air during our campaign last year that he went through a list of every single person who gave to the ministry up until that point, and I don't know when this was in the campaign. He went through the list, and he prayed for every single person by name. And then he revealed that he has actually done this for years, I think it was like 10 years. Dan had such a heart for the people who come alongside this ministry. And folks, I'm telling you, I know Dan is not here anymore. But myself and Shanna and everyone in the control room and the news guys and Kay and Yvonne and the whole team here carries that same heart. We value the people who love this ministry. We value you. So please don't take what I've told you here as me just saying, oh, you know, they're just all about the money. They just want to make ends meet. They want to do all that. Ultimately, folks, it's not about the money. We understand that we can't do what we do without the funding to do it. So we're asking. Ultimately, it is about exposing Jesus for all he is, all he means, and all he can do, defunding the kingdom of darkness and funding the kingdom of light. And if you support our ministry, that's what you're getting involved in. And I promise you folks, God is not going to forget that.
I'm not saying that if you give to FISM TV, God's going to like give you $100,000. I'm not saying that at all. That's silliness and foolishness. If you give generously to our ministry or to any ministry that is faithful, especially to your church, God's not going to forget that. I'm simply asking folks, as Shanna has done as well, that you would consider giving to financial issues. FISM.tv forward slash legacy.